week number 6 lecture number 4 hello friends so now we discuss about kubler and ross models this is one of the griff models so let us again revise some of the things what we have discussed earlier what is griff griff is the emotion people feel when they experience a loss and there are many different types of loss and not all of them are related to death this one point you must understand many different types grief because of death of course it is there but when there are major losses you experience grief earthquake has happened Your house has just come down, down to the dust. Some fire and house has been burned. Your father has lost the job; he is now unemployed. So there are so many major losses, including a divorce between wife and husband. So they are called major losses, and life changes thereafter. For example, a person can also grieve over the breakup of an. break up of an intimate relationship or after parent moves away from home you know however remember that it's a natural reaction to the loss of someone important to you it's just just a natural reaction it is also the name for the healing process that a person goes through after someone close has died the grieving process process takes time and the healing usually happens gradually losing someone suddenly can be extremely traumatic though no matter though no matter how old that person is maybe someone you know died unexpectedly as a result of violence or a car accident for example it can it can take a long time to overcome a sudden loss because you may feel caught off guard by the event and the intense feelings that are associated with it the grieving process is very very personal and individual grief to me can be different from another person so it is personal and individual just cannot be compared each person goes through his or her grief differently some people reach out for support for, from others and find find comfort in good memories the people like me they do not reach out they just absorb the shock in themselves there are many models of grief and they provide framework for understanding what bereaved people tell us about their experiences a central notion is that grief must be confronted and expressed otherwise it may become pathological and manifest in some other way this is the traditional model normally this is what we are doing other models came up after lots of research and they have named as such like one model i spoke about ross model dabda traditional model is just what we are generally doing it traditionally grief has been described as a process divided into a series of overlapping phases stages or task like in our hindu society whenever somebody dies things are like this only there is intense shock disbelief but then slowly and slowly just people people start accepting it and on 12th day or uh, we have certain rites of the deceased and thereafter that mourning process process you know slowly and slowly gets over we call it baravi we shall we generally celebrate it so that you know all those things reach to our people in heaven in traditional model stages are the same numbness separation because that disease has separated from you so naturally you feel pain despair you lose hopes because it when you 
you come under despair, you come under, you lose hopes when it is not under your control and we know that there are so many things in our life which are not under our control. Then acceptance, you accept it and then you resolve, so must go on. You start leading your life the way you had been doing it. Memory still remains, memory still lingers on. Sweet memory, you keep remembering them, but your life goes on. This is the model which we are going to talk about, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, a Swiss-born psychiatrist, author of the groundbreaking book, this book on death and dying. And this is where, on this book, she gave out this famous model called Kubler-Ross model. She did lots of research, how we accept death, and she worked within a psychoanalytic framework. She interviewed more than 200 dying patients and she proposed five distinct stages through which individual pass. After this research, she came out with Rose model. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance finally. Let's go over on each stage. This is how it goes. You deny it, anger, you get some emotional sub. This is first information clinician. So your shock is higher. Then slowly and slowly over a period of time it comes down. Emotional support is there. It just comes down. And then again depression starts. And then finally you accept it because of guidance and direction. Same thing. Shock, denial, frustration, depression, experiment, decision, then you integrate with your own life. These are different sketches I have given it. Let's see the first denial. First reaction is denial. In this stage, individual believe the diagnosis is somewhat mistaken and cling to false preferable reality. This happens with most of the people in hospital. They blame the doctor. The doctor did this, doctor did that. It's a false thing because they, they just denied. It's a psych denial is a psychological mechanism that you can't accept a thing, you immediately deny. This cannot happen, you know. Denial aids in placing your feelings of grief. Your grief comes down because of denial. Because you are, it's a defense mechanism, psychological defense mechanism that you reduce, it reduces the shock. Instead of becoming completely overwhelmed with grief, we deny it, do not accept it and stagger it, full impact on us at one time. Think of it as your body's natural defense mechanism. This is what I was telling you. It's your natural defense mechanism. You say, hey, there is only so much I can handle at once. Once the denial and shock starts to fade, the start of the healing process begins. These are some of the examples I have given. During breakup of drivers, you just say they are just upset. This will be over tomorrow. Job loss, they were mistaken. They will call me tomorrow to say they need me. Denied, still they do not accept the loss. They fired me out of the company. They say no, they are mistaken. Death of a loved one, she is not gone. She will come around the corner any second. She will come back. She is not gone. She is not dead. Terminal illness diagnosis, this is not happening to me. The results are wrong. Patient doesn't believe those results. First reaction, it is defense mechanism, psychological defense mechanism, very, very natural, nothing to worry about it. Second, anger. When the individual recognizes that denial cannot continue, denial can last for few minutes, for one hour, two hours. Then they become frustrated and when you feel frustrated, what is the most handy thing for us? We get angry. I also do the same thing. Certain psychological responses of a person undergoing this phase would be, why me? It is not fair. How can this happen to me? 
who is to be blamed? Why would this happen? Think of anger as strength to bind you to reality. Anger is one thing which gives you strength. When you get angry, all of a sudden lots of strength comes into your body. But when anger is gone away, you are so loose, you know, totally. You become weak. The direction of anger towards something or somebody is what might bridge you back to reality and connect you to people again. Let's see the example. Again, the same example I am giving, breakup or divorce. I hate him, he will regret leaving me. Job loss, they are terrible bosses. I hope they fail, you know. The company bloody fails. Death of a loved one, if she cared for herself more, this wouldn't have happened. She should have taken her care, personal care. If she would have taken more care, she wouldn't have died like this. Terminal illness. Where is God in this? How dare God let this happen? Now you see, you, you distrust God. Where is God? God bloody can't help me like this. God, He is nowhere. Otherwise, if God is there, He cannot let this particular thing happen to me. Start bargaining. Third stage involves the hope that the individual generally, most of us have got a hope. And hope lasts till eternity. Individual can avoid the cause of grief. Usually, the negotiation for an extended life is made in exchange for a reformed lifestyle. People facing less serious trauma can be bargain or seek compromise. For instance, I had give anything to this, 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 this. Example: breakup or divorce. If only I had spent more time with her, she would have stayed. It is my fault. I did not stay. I did not give more time to her. I was so busy with my work. Job loss. If only I worked more weekends, they would have seen how valuable I am. I would have worked better, more output. Then they would have kept me over there. They would have seen my values. Death of a loved one. If only I had called her that night, she wouldn't be gone. I would have called her that particular night to come back. Terminal illness. If only we had gone to the doctor sooner, we could have stopped this. This happens most of the times, particularly in cancer cases. I have seen they go to doctor when a cancer patient already it has reached cancer has reached to stage three or stage four. You know, they don't go early. That guy says yes. We had gone to the doctor earlier than this particular thing. Could have been stopped. This is called bargaining. Fourth stage, depression. I'm so sad. Why bother with anything? I'm going to die soon. So what is the point? I miss my loved one. So now you are under depression. So you you can say anything. You can do anything. The world around you does not exist. Even you don't exist yourself. Also for that matter. You don't want to be around others. Don't feel like talking and experience feelings of hopelessness. You might even experience suicidal thoughts. And therefore, when a person, grieving person, is under depression, people around must keep a watch on him. Examples: divorce. Why go on at all? Thikke, fine. Divorce is okay. We should not continue with that life. Job loss. I don't know how to go forward from here. Death of a loved one. What am I without her now? You know, depression, terminal illness. My whole life comes to this terrible end. You know, what to do now with this life? No use. Finally comes acceptance. It's going to be okay. Now the time has come. Enough time has passed. Lot of water has. Passed under the bridge, so time is okay. I may as well prepare for it. In last stage, individuals embrace mortality or inevitable future or that of a loved one or other tragic event. People dying may precede the survivors in this state, which typically comes with a calm, retrospective view for the individual and a stable condition of emotion. Examples: 
after breakup when you accept the reality this is the final statement ultimately this was a healthy choice for me acha hua hum alag ho gaye better for both of us that we got separated job loss i'll be able to find a way forward from here and can start a new path okay fine i'll find another job i'll continue let's see and that for, that job might be better than this particular job death of a loved one i'm so fortunate to have had so many wonderful years with him and will always be in my memory we had so much of time together happy time together and he will remain in my memory this is what we do for wife and husband and children we put a photo over there and photo is there on the wall but after all they are there in our memories forever very men and health risk predisposes people to physical and mental illness precipitates illness and health exacerbates existing illness leads to health threatening behavior results in increased use of health services may lead to depression these are the health risk a bereavement or grieving process not over in required time symptoms of grief crying headaches difficulty sleeping you question your spiritual beliefs feelings of detachment isolation from friends and family abnormal behavior worry anxiety frustration guilt fatigue you get tired you don't feel like doing anything anger loss of appetite you don't feel hungry at all even the good food comes in front of you just bloody close your eyes you don't do anything aches and pains and stress treatment yes if it is a prolonged grief so we must take a psychological treatment otherwise the person will go under depression prescription of medication is the most common methods of treating grief and this should be given by a recognized psychiatrist only <laughs> counseling is a more solid approach people around must talk to them wise people elderly people if that not possible then get counseling support there are counselors available nowadays few days of counseling few hours of talking and active listening by the counselor i think this grief can be resolved if you are a loved one is having a hard time coping with a grief even seek treatment from health professionals too so these are the options available to for treatment of grief this is all about grief and bereavement gentlemen it's a psychological thing it will come and go but i say that we human being must remain mentally strong and must accept the realities of life so in such situation we have got that resilience we fight against such major loss of course shock will be there after all we are human beings we love our people we love our property home these their job and other things and if some major loss occurs definitely we do come under shock but it should be for a limited time and second thing for all this psychological distress including bereavement and grief social support is the best support cultivate social support around your friends family members don't fight with them love them take their advantages take their support you must have people with you to whom you should be able to call them any time and tell them anything that is real social support thank you